now. So we we continue from the this point, one point five building uh, sequences and on Sean's side. Yeah, so we looked at uh, we are looking at some building functions that would be very helpful in um, as we go along in the book. So first, they introduced the enumerate function, uh, which uh, returns a uh, enumerate returns a uh, sequence of let's say i values of like tuples. Yeah. So uh, the enumerate function could also be used uh, in a in a for loop, and it could be used in different. Uh, situations because you sometimes you want to say for for x in 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 blah 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 uh, count or so the enumerate function helps in 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 stuff like that and then they they also mentioned the sorted function I think we had discussed this sorted function previously so basically it's it sorts it's it sorts out the 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 the, the list yeah um, so if Let's say we we can see here, it sorts out this from the smallest to the to the biggest numbers, and the zip uh, the zip uh, function pairs up the elements of a number of lists or uh, lists number of lists tuples or other uh, sequences to create a, a list of tuples. So th this is one sequence and this is another sequence. So when we use the when we call the zip function, it combines the 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 two by uh, connecting the corresponding uh, um, entries in in each of these uh, sequence, yeah, yeah, like this, yeah. So you it connects uh, four to one, bar to two, and bars to three. The zip can can uh, can take an arbitrary number of sequences, and uh, and the number of elements it produces is determined by the shortest. So here uh, we have the start sequence. So when we combine all and uh, when you combine all using the zip, the zip, the zip it it takes this um, the the third sequence, which is the shortest. So it uh, it takes that sequence. So then the results is going to be limited to uh, yeah. So we have the basically the the, the third elements in 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 the first and the second sequence. It drops it because it is determined by the shortest uh, sequence. So a common use of zip is simultaneously iterating over multiple sequences, possibly also combined with, with enumerate. Like for, for example, we, we want yeah, it, it, yeah, to we want to iterate uh, for, for, for index uh, AB in numerate, zip which combines the two sequences and then we we print it out so they are basically what uh, what this uh, for loop does is it gives us the index and uh, the the index for zero and then combines the, the 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 elements in the two sequences yeah so the first element uh, the, the the first index which is zero uh, the in the first sequence we have four and in this in the second sequence we have one and uh in the in the the second index which is one the first in the first sequence we have uh, and in the second sequence we have two and 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 go the the the, the list goes on what the the reverse function uh, uh uh iterates over the element of a sequence in the reverse order so when we use the reverse so it gives us this instead of counting from zero to ten it gives us from nine Eight seven um, six five to zero. Yeah, if, if you have any comments or anything to add on, uh, feel free to 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 just interrupt. This uh, set and dictionary comprehensions. Uh, expression for value in collection, if condition. For example, given a list of strings, we could filter out uh, strings with lengths two or less and convert them to uppercase. So this is an example. We have this uh, string. Uh, we could use the, 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 the upper function. So let's say x, x could be anything for like x dot upper, which call in the upper function for x in, in this string, if length of x, uh, 
is greater than two. So we, so when we call this, uh, we get this because basically what, what we are conditioning it, we are, we are making a for loop, but we are conditioning that it returns the values for which uh, X it's a uh, greater than uh, like two and that it turns it to a, to a uppercase. So we can see as here, X is exactly two, so it will not call, it will not bring this, but it, it brings bat, ka, and doof, and python, and it, it converts them to uppercase because of the upper function we used previously. So we can also use the same reasoning for uh, a dictionary comprehension, just like uh, in the list, uh, we could have the dictionary, uh, a dictionary comprehension looks like this, where suppose we want uh, a set containing just the length of the strings contained in the collection, like, like we have unique length, length of X for X in string. So we, we have the, the length. So this one, this function just gives us uh, the, like this for loop just gives us the length of the, the strings in, in, in X. Yeah, like if you have any comments. He oh, also man. mentions, yeah, yeah we can also, really. yeah. yeah, we could also create a, a lookup map for these strings mm. for the allocation in the list. So we could also create a lookup map for mm -hmm. uh, like the value for mm -hmm. index, for index, mm -hmm. uh, value in enumerate string. So, so basically, uh, it, it it it's like this for loop is like uh, it takes the value and then it gives us the the index of that 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 value in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Nested list comprehension. Or... Suppose we have a, a list uh, uh, of list containing some uh, English and Sp Spanish names. Uh, we want to get a single list containing all names with two or more. Is in the so we could uh, we could do this so this is it so we just want the 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 the, val the the values for the names that have more than one a like which is like Maria and Natalia so we could use this for loop name for names in in all data for name in names uh, yeah I think this would if you're not familiar with it it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense you know but mm -hmm. um, yeah, because you like yeah, because uh, this is about the name. Python. Yeah, Python yeah, is uh, yeah, kind of unique. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I, I I was using this. Uh, uh, maybe this, this maybe let Python. me yeah yeah let me try to hold on. Let me try to rewriting this one for you to help you understand this one. Because uh, what this one actually about is mm -hmm. like uh, this one is like a uh, four. Mm -hmm. Names in all data. Okay. And then mm -hmm. there is another for loop in names. Mm -hmm. Name in names. So what this one actually does is the first for loop is just kind of a try to extract the, all of the, these names. Okay. From yeah. the old data. And after mm -hmm. that, what the this name in names does is, okay, here we already pick up the, okay, for example, we can actually pick up the John in this case. Yeah. And then in, in the next for loop, we actually try to extract what is called the J, O, H, uh -huh. N. And then we can actually, if name, Actually, this one is what it call name. And this one is actually names. From the names, we can actually extract each character from yeah. the names. And then we can have a if function like a name count and mm -hmm. a equal to. What this one means, when we're looking at the, this one, okay? Yeah. If if we have a uh, what name count means, the uh, we actually counting the counting the character number of a character, 
with the character A from the name. And then in, in this case, we have a zero, right? There is no character A in John. Yeah. Mm. That means it's the force, right? Yeah. So in that case, we cannot, uh, this one is actually kind of a name. This, this name count is a zero, that's the force. Maybe what about the Maria? When we try to do the Maria, we have a two A's in the name, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is the true. So that's the, we can keep that one. Yeah, so okay. Just yeah, one. and then, and then we actually store those things, all of the, these things, uh, all of the, these things, we can store the, uh, this, this process as a result. Yeah, result, yeah. And then when we type the result, we can get the Maria and Natalia because, Maria has the two A, and then Natalia is the three A's, right? Like three, which yeah. meets which meets the which meet the this if function. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the how does this one things? It's a actually double loop. Yeah, yeah. It's more. It's it's, it's much more. Yeah, clear. but yeah. but the thing is, sometimes in the Python we can actually do these things look. Uh, look, uh, look like uh, this kind of uh, the the things what he mentioned in the book, you know. Yeah. Do you yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's it's much clearer yeah. now. So I was yeah. like, I was there is this uh, a free um sort of um website that like Python tutor. So let me show you. Yeah. So I use that also. Yeah. It uh, it makes it much easier because. In a sense, it it visualizes the code for you. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, if I say now visualize, so it shows yeah, me what, right. what is happening. Yeah. So, yeah. How can I erase this? Hmm. It's weird. Yeah, so 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 you see now yeah. showing me yeah, yeah. how the, the, the code works. So this this yeah. this for me it's it's very helpful because yeah. right, I, right. Just, I, I see actually what is wrong. Yeah. So yeah. then I can I can see what is wrong in my code. And mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so I it, so this will run for like uh, 30, 37 times before it finishes. Because you know yeah. it's still in the in the in the for loop, so it goes up and down, yeah. goes and up. It's it's counting, yeah. it's counting until it uh, yeah. Exhaust. So you can yeah. as it as it does that, it tracks it here. Yeah. And then yeah. So yeah, then it gives you the yeah, right. The actual results. Yeah. yeah so I right. yeah, I think it might be useful. Yeah. For me it uh, I found it useful. Yeah, right. Yeah. How can I erase this? Maybe yeah, can me, you yeah. can you erase it? Yeah, let me see if I do uh Right, because I can, I think I can erase this, but. Yeah, it should be, it should be. Able to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But your explanation was quite uh, useful because it, it makes it much uh, easier to visualize. Yeah. Because, uh, because uh, sometimes, Python has uh, this kind of um, uh, expression kind of things because uh, this one actually allows us to reduce the number of lines of the code. So that's the how those things works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So basically, he's still uh, explaining the same stuff here as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just explaining the same stuff how. We can use like some kind of a for loop and do a lot of, um, and this could be very useful when you are doing some data cleaning. You can just use the for loop and it, it will help you to do a lot of things. Mm. Yeah, then it moves to uh, a function. So, it, I mean, this diagram is uh, some some kind of cool. So, like the, the function is some kind of a black box, you know, you put in some, some argument or some inputs 
and it does some something inside the black box, which are the like the, the the arguments of the function, and then it gives you an output, which is like the return. So that's it. These are the arguments we put in, and then we have some arguments that will do some things like some kind of a processing, and then we have an output, which is the, the return. So functions are uh, the primary and most important method of code organization and use in, in Python. So so basically, uh, even these keywords we, we, we see, there are some um, like, uh, so uh, I think functions are very handy, especially if you are working with code and you see that you are always repeating some snippet of codes, you are copying, pasting, copying, and pasting, then it signals that, you know, you're better off just making it a function and, and call it when you need it, something like this. So they use the, the, the def keyword, which is like definition, I guess, keyword. Uh, each function can have a, a, can have positional arguments and keyword arguments. So, uh, so, so basically the keyword uh, arguments are most common used to specify default values or optional arguments. But in any case, they have to follow the positional arguments. Yeah, so here the, the, the positional arguments are X and Y and the keyword argument or the optional argument is, is the Z, which is usually set to a default value. So if we call this function, like this function returns this, it returns the sum of uh, um, um, X plus Y multiplied by Z. So when we assign X to be four and uh, X to be four and Y to be 25, uh, and then we insert it into this function, we get this results. So, uh, so that's like the, the the black box. You just put in the 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 input, which is like the argument, and then we get this result. The default value is already z. So when we when we assign another value to z, it picks that. But when we just assign, when we just call the function without assigning any value to z, it takes the default value. So the main restrictions on function mm -hmm. argument is that the keyword argument must follow the positional argument here, yeah, like we mentioned that already. And then you have some of the, the things uh, you have to remind of or it makes um, I, I useful in the in functions like the namespace, the scope, and the local function functions. A more descriptive name describing a function, a variable scope in Python is a namespace. Consider the following. So like A is assigned to an empty list. Then we have the function def like def function, then we have a for loop for i in the range of five, a dot appends to i. Mm. One function is called the empty list is created. Yeah, the empty list is created. Uh, five elements are appended. Uh, and then a is destroyed when the function exists. Yeah. So what's what's the namespace here? Do you, do you do you get the idea it's time to explain? Because when when you say it's a kind of a more descriptive name, this kind of barrier of scope in Python is a namespace, what does that mean is a yeah, yeah, I, you, I, yeah I you can just uh, yeah, scroll down. Mm. Yeah, so in the book, it also yeah. gives. Because uh... in here, alternative and more descriptive name describing the main variable scope is the namespace, any variable they assigned with the function. Is a local namespace. And then pretty arguments. Local namespace is the destroyed. So what does this mean is mm -hmm. in here, inside yeah. the function, mm -hmm. we actually define the what is called the A, right? As an empty list. That one yeah. is actually local namespace because uh, that one is actually works inside the function. Mm. It is not the global kind of a variable, like uh, like uh, when we try to say a 
equal another list of the outside the defined function. Yeah, That's yeah. the global namespace. But inside the function, that is only work within the function. So that's the only things. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, okay, in here, in the, at the yeah. bottom in here, when you, when you define here as an A is the empty list in this one, mm -hmm. this one is actually global, global namespace. Yeah, because it's that outside means, the, the Yeah, function. that means outside the defined function, it does yeah. not go away. Yeah. Okay. Once we define, it does not go away. Yeah. But in this case, in here, A, mm -hmm. in this case, is actually kind of a uh, kind of a, what is called a local. In this case, this one is actually what is called a local namespace. Mm. This one is only defined, only available, and then defined within the these dif, these functions. Function, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So once we once after executing this function and then get the result, this variable does not. Uh, this this local namespace variable is not is no longer available any any anymore. The in this case, a only work within a function, okay? Mm. Yeah. In this case, this one is a global namespace. It is actually works anywhere, okay? Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. That's the one it says. So in he, in this case, when you call the for function inside of this one, what this one does is uh, this one actually actually calls about the global namespace. In this case, because mm. uh, this a is actually defined outside the function. The function, yeah. But in in up up this case. It is already defined a inside the function, right? Yeah. And then uh, when you uh, call the append function in this one, in this case, a is actually called from the not the global is the local. Huh. Even if there is actually name in here, because uh, in here inside the function there is a local another a as a local namespace, so this one actually. For the for the function for the local namespace, not the global one. Do you know what I'm under, what I what I yeah, said? Yeah, 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 Make yeah, yeah. Because uh, this one is also same when we run the R. Okay. Hmm. R also has the same same definition. In R, we can also yeah. say about the. A, A, A is like a maybe no, uh -huh. okay, empty. Yeah. And then maybe we can say for I in maybe sequence zero to four. And then we can also say about the Oh, not the full function. Like, uh, we can also try to do the same thing because uh, even if in R, maybe we can say about the my function. <laughs> Excuse me, my function. Uh, uh, and then maybe we can say about the function. And then maybe we can say hey, A. And then we might have uh, A go maybe uh maybe r r bind a go no and then r bind something dmp or a kind of thing so in this case a is a local okay uh, uh. 
it's the same thing. R also has the same same kind of a system. That's the what, what that's the what namespace and local. It is actually a definition of the global global variable and local variable. Local variable only works within the some specific functions, like a func when we define the functions or a for loop inside the for loop. But global function, once we define it, it can be used anywhere. Yeah, and, and it gets the local namespace. Uh, yeah. Gets destroyed uh, after we like run the function, you know? Yeah, that's what does that mean? Because what, what it says about the destroy means when when the function is executed, ex, mm. at, at the function, after executing that function, the function, yeah. A local, uh, that local namespace used mm -hmm. in, inside the function does not available any longer. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. So it gives an example here, yeah. Uh, to uh, each uh, call to function will uh, modify uh, list A. Uh, mm, okay. Oh, mm. Cause the reason why in the in the first one A. Yeah. Cause uh, at at the top we already defined the. Define the A mm. as a global namespace, right? Yeah. So once we run the function, okay, and then that function actually ha using the that global global namespace, right? Here. Yeah. So when you uh, get the result for the A. You have uh, this one, mm -hmm. but when you try to do the once again, and then run the A, when you try to type A, you can see that there is a twice, cause uh, mm -hmm. it actually accumulated in this case, cause uh, A is actually global namespace. Yeah, it accumulated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause uh, it yeah. actually used anywhere. Mm -hmm. That actually causes the, this kind of a result because every time you run the that function, that function keep appending the that that number that list to the yeah. this a, okay? It, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it mentioned that uh, it's possible to assign variables outside of uh, the function mm -hmm. scope, but uh, mm -hmm. those variables must be declared explicitly using either the global or the non-local keyword, like like here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we have to declare them, like we have mm -hmm. uh, none. none as A, then we yes. we define the, the function, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we have uh, we have like a inside, mm -hmm. which is like uh, um, yeah. So we have the 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 local a, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we we have assigned a to a, an empty list. Mm -hmm. Then then we can print the we can we can print the function. Mm -hmm. So non local function. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, we actually mm -hmm. define the kind of a more like a declaration explicitly about the global and non-global keyword. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very confusing kind of things, but once you try to understand this one, it is a very useful function. Mm. Useful concept, I mean. Yeah. So it, it also talks about returning multiple multiple values, mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, b because normally the, the return function, the, the sorry the, the, the return in the in the in the uh, function like basically returns uh, uh, a particular value, 
but we could also uh, set it in such a way that we could it could return um, many values. Like uh, uh, example of this function, where a is equals to five, b six, and so we we like return a, b, and c, and mm -hmm. then then we say a, b, c is equals to the function. So mm -hmm. in this case, it will return actually what we call like if we just call a, it will return the the value associated with a and b also so something like this right mm. Mm. yeah so here basically it will return one object even though uh, uh we are saying return a b and c but it, it will not necessarily return all of them at once you will it will return in one 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 object at a time depending on the object we want it to return mm -hmm. yeah closer closer in here mm. uh, this is the what is the how we can assign we can define the tuple so when you when you try to learn this command we can get the like a five six seven as a tuple mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah yeah Because in here, return ABC, this one is as a tuple. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, yeah, we could use the return value, uh, like uh, like uh, return value is equal to the function. Uh, would it uh, be a three, uh, yeah, like a triple, uh, like a tuple, a potential interactive alternative to return in multiple. Yeah, so like, like this, it, uh, uh, yeah, so it will return um, uh, some kind of a tuple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like this. This could be useful depending on what you are, what you are, what you are doing. Uh, then it, it it continues to say that functions are objects. Since Python functions are objects, many constructs can be easily expressed that are. Uh, 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 difficult to do in other languages. Suppose we were doing some data cleaning and need to apply some transformation, like this is the data and we want to clean it. We want to remove uh, some of these uh, symbols that are not part of the name of the variables. So uh, because uh, uh, functions are, are objects in Python, we can yeah use, easily use for loops to, to clean this data in a in a function which uh, makes it very easy which might not be the case for other languages as you mentioned so we import uh, re so what is this re uh that one is actually one of the python uh, packages i don't packages, know what yeah. it is yeah, yeah. It's, it's maybe it's the short code for one of the packages yeah but yeah. basically we import this package and then we define the function and that this is the string the string we want to um, mm -hmm. we define the function uh, mm -hmm. clean string um, uh, strings uh, ah, so are we actually representing mm -hmm. for the regular expression ah, regular yeah. uh, regular expressions oh, okay yeah. with the uh, uh, yeah regular expressions so for values in uh, in strings a value uh, is that strip? So we strip first the uh, some of the values that we don't need, and we convert these values to regular ex uh, expressions, and then we make the title like some kind of a capitalization, and then we append all that to results, and then we say return. So because because uh, functions are objects, we can do all this in one function, and and just in one function we can clean this data. So basically, that's what it, uh, he's trying to explain now. So using this uh, um, uh, using this clean clean string, we are able to uh, transform this uh, data in a very clean, nice way, just in one string. So now the clean string function, when we put state in, it cleans it and gives us uh, a clean data. 
So there, there could be many ways where we could uh, um, write this uh, uh, function, but basically he's, the point he's trying to make here is because uh, functions are considered objects in Python, we can, we can do a lot with that. And that, that, that is very useful, especially when you are cleaning data and, 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 and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So it, it talks about the uh, anonymous lambda function. Uh, so it's like Python has support for uh, so-called anonymous or lambda functions, which are a way of writing Python, uh, writing function consisting of a single statement. The results of which is the return value. They are defined in the lambda keyword, which has no meaning other than we are declaring an uh, anonymous function. Oh, that's, uh, that's that's quite interesting. So uh, uh, when we like the shut uh, function x returns uh, um, x times two, uh, the equivalent anonymous, like uh, when we use the lambda function, we can use, uh, uh, it could be like, lambda x and then it gives uh, like x times two other other function so so basically the uh, uh, lambda keyword it's used to when we want to declare like an anonymous anonymous function sort of where we don't give it any specific uh, defi definition something like this yeah yeah Mm. So, like this lambda functions could be very useful depending on the type of data cleaning you are doing. Mm -hmm. And and it also talks about generators. Many uh, objects in Python support iterations such as over objects in a list or line in a file. Uh, this is accomplished by means of uh, the iterator protocol, a generic way to make objects uh, iterable. For example, uh, iter iterating over a, a dictionary yields the dictionary key. Like so, if you have a dictionary like this, that's the 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 um, A, B, and and C for key in some some dict print key so it, it prints the, the key so uh, a, can we can we also uh, iterate through the values if you say for value in in key uh, print uh, print for value in some dict print value i think yeah that should also be so here. it's a it's a value function yeah so it, it, yeah. yeah let's say if we say something like this okay and uh, yeah so when we say um, value and mm -hmm. then print value yeah. it's also the same mm -hmm. but you also okay. say about the value yeah some mm -hmm. like this yeah you you have to edit after this one, you so change it, and yeah. you sum DICT. Uh, but like uh, in a in a, a different uh, line, or I just continue adding that. No, you have to change in this one, not this one. Like a value, sum. T I C T. You have to change it. Type this one. Okay, let's see. I think oh. that's yeah. I think mm -hmm. that that one is yeah. Mm -hmm. Some text, some your your value name. Yeah, yeah. some. Yeah, underscore D I C T, and then run the command. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So it, it, is. it seems like it, it works only with the, the key, not not the value. 
Yeah. Or maybe you can say, I think that you can say about the just only see the some dict in here. Hmm? Maybe I think I'm I was wrong. So yeah, maybe sorry, in okay. here some D I C T and then in, in here print value in here. Maybe print mm -hmm. value value like this. Uh, I'm I'm not sure because there yeah, is a I, function I called the value, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so it's it's like uh for example, the shading over yes, yeah, yes, the key 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 value. Yeah. So so basically yeah. I think when we iterate over dictionaries, it gets it gives mm -hmm. us the key value. Yeah. Yeah, right. So for 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 then for for you, for example, for yeah. key and something, the Python interpreter first attempts to uh, create the create an iterator out of dict like this, dict iterator. Yeah. Yeah, some. Yeah. Let mm. me let me see. I can print. Mm. Oh, not that one. Because I think that maybe go when we go when we go to the dictionary part. Yeah. Mm. Maybe we actually. See the value. Uh, value. Ah, yeah. Uh, like, uh, uh, uh Yeah, okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. So uh how you can do this is for key in some dictionary and then in here you actually changing this one into print. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. Oh on that mm. yeah, but I, go I to, think uh go to the your your yeah Jupiter and then a changing here this one mm. to this okay mm. so no, uh -huh. no, I think with, with key, it's fine because we, 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 we will always get it. I, I was thinking whether we can use it to get the value, but it seems like that that would not work. It seems like for, for dictionaries, we can only uh, iterate or... Uh, so, no, no, no. Your, your goal is uh, if you wanted to get uh, this, this value, like one, two, three, yeah. what you have to do is four mm -hmm. key mm -hmm. in... Some, yeah. Some dictionary, mm -hmm. and then print mm. some dictionary and key. Okay. Hmm. Done that. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, what this mm -hmm. one does is uh, this one actually yeah. take the all of the these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what this one does is uh, we actually uh taking the some call A, and yeah. then it actually gives us one in case yeah, of the B. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh, C yeah. equal three. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah, so but that's it about the generator stuff. Mm-hmm.
So he's like, when we want to get a, a, a convenient, when we want to get the generator, we can use the uh, the yield instead of the return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it generates uh, squares from uh, one to hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Generator expressions. This is ex uh, 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 this is a generator analog analog to list dictionary and set comprehension to uh, create one includes what would otherwise be a list comprehension with uh, within parentheses instead of instead of brackets. Oh, uh, so this. Uh, is also another way you could uh, uh, generate expressions. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I think that this one is a three point two. So, so you uh, uh okay, three point two. Okay, here. And then, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, you still have a lot of things to cover in this case. So generator. Yeah. So you what you try to try to do is the generate function, right? Expression. Yeah, yeah. So the generator is like uh, how to like generate uh, some mm -hmm. uh, some 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 values. It, it's talking about that, you know. Okay. How to generate some expressions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's like uh, it's it's similar to how you generate like how you use the the lists and dictionary comprehensions we saw previously, mm -hmm. where we 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 use the 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 for loop. So we can also use uh, the generator and um, to create one includes what otherwise would be a list comprehension within parentheses instead of uh, instead of brackets and. Hmm. And, and and then when we call this, it will generate something. Yeah, because hmm. uh, what this one does that does means is by using the, this kind of a brackets, we actually try to assign the result of the, this one yeah. into the some specific memory boxes, which is the randomized by the number. So these are the kind of a kind of a what is called the assigned number, random memory random number. Okay, so what does this one means is it does, when we try to do this, like this, it does not, when we try to type the gen, it does not give us about the result. Instead, we actually know about the where those results actually stored inside our memory box. Okay. Do you know what I'm oh. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the what the generate expression is about. Yeah, but when you're using the this kind of a sum function in this case, right? Uh -huh. In this case, when we type the this one like the same as a this gen, it actually has a, has a give us about the result. Not the yeah, kind of object yeah, number. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's the how that. generator expression yeah. is about. Yeah. Yeah. It gives us the actual. Yeah. yeah. And also instead of the typing the this, this, mm -hmm. if we can define this one, we can yeah. also instead of the this one, we can also type some gen. Some gen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then and then, then give, give us a, a, give us a, this result, not the this where where is assigned yeah, generate us, because the GN a, yeah hmm. GN EXPR this one is abbreviation of the general uh, generator expre uh, expression so yeah yeah so it it looks about looks at the the ITA tools model, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, has a collection of generators for many common data algorithms. Uh, group by takes any sequence or 
and a function grouping consecutive elements uh, in the sequence by return value of the, mm -hmm. the function. Like mm -hmm. uh, when we import the ITA tool, we have like def defined this function for mm -hmm. like x and returns uh, x, x zero. That means like, like an index of zero, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this one is actually a function that allows us to the, get the first character of mm. the of the names in this case. So yeah. these are all the index zero, right? Yeah. So A, A, J, L, K, maybe M or something. And then this for loop, and then we can actually using the function called uh, group by objective yeah, they, function. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. They, they group by, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can call the names. Names, here, yeah. And then and we they... can run the first letter. Yeah, command. the first letter, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then we can printing the those things as a list names. Mm. Letter and list names. So mm -hmm. stars A is Aaron and Adam, and J mm -hmm. is a Jackie, etc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So then we have a table of uh, other uh, ether tool functions, which are mm -hmm. could be nice for one to check out. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think at, towards the end, it gives us how to deal with errors and exception handling. Handling errors and exception mm -hmm. gracefully is an important part of building uh, robust programs. Mm -hmm. So this function will run fine. But uh, if we, instead of attempt, like uh, uh, attempt float, instead of giving it uh, like uh, actual integers, if we mm -hmm. like give it a string, mm -hmm. then uh, it, it might create an error. You might want to suppress, uh, uh, so we, have the, we, we might have this error message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so that's it. We have the, the error message, which is like this, mm -hmm. and it, it in a sense the error message gives you an idea of what you are wrong, what is wrong, because it says uh, a, a float argument must be a string mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a real number, not a tuple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So here we are using a tuple. Mm -hmm. And and it, the argument has to be either a string or yeah, it has to be either a string or an integer, not not a tuple. So mm -hmm. then then you know if you read the error message, we could easily go through this and and try to correct this. Yeah, right. Yeah. You you catch uh you can catch multiple except uh, exception types by writing a tuple of exception types instead. The point is. Parentheses are, are required. Hmm. Also, we have we can also set some exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we have except the error type uh, and the value error. Then then in this case the co the code will the, the code will work. Because mm -hmm. uh, the thing the difference from the previous code and then this code is, mm -hmm. in case of the previous one. We only yeah. except for the value error. Yeah, the value error. Right. Mm -hmm. But but the thing is, in case of the tuple, we actually mm -hmm. have a two errors. Like a, one is the value and one is the type error. Yeah. But okay, to correct those things, we can actually get some more some exception, exceptions. additional yeah. exception yeah. for the yeah. value and type. Type. And yeah. after that, when we run the even if when we run inside the tuple. It gives so, us to the yeah, return yeah, to the yeah. as it is. Yeah, it gives us. So that's the how we can control the error. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, knowing how to set uh, exceptions in our in our function helps us to, in a sense, not to always be running into errors. We could always mm -hmm. put some exceptions uh, into yeah to make our code work mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Mm. This one is actually kind of a typical example about uh, yeah. how we can check the mm. file gonna be 
succeedingly imported or not failing to importing or something. So like yeah. correcting the error. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think can, I think can, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it for it's, it's almost done. Yeah, that's it for each other. Oh well, actually you you, some... you you just uh, you actually need to deal discuss about the file and operating system because this one is actually very important. Because mm -hmm. in here, when you yeah. see the file and operating system, this one actually give us about the, how we can open the file. So mm -hmm. that is the open function called open. And then uh, there is a path. And then uh, there is an encoding type going to be determined. And then this one actually does not mean that it is open and then uh, all things just kind of a store as a F as an object. And then when we try to try to importing the this uh these objects, we actually try to do the by line by the line, like a for roof, and then yeah. open path and then uh, these things, and then R3 function, and then we can click the line, and then that actually try to give us to the actual data set. This one is just kind of a define about the, our importing file as an object. Okay. And then we to, to see what's in there actually, we actually try to try to learn that this kind of a commanding command if we wanted to importing file contents, maybe by line, line by line. That means actually text file actually store as an object, like a F. And then this line function actually importing the this file by the line, line by line, okay? And then yeah. storing, storing as a list. This one is a zero. First line is the zero. Second line is one. Third line is two, etc. Okay. That's the how 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 learn how actually read the code. So when you scroll down a little bit, yeah. Uh, maybe you you did not have uh, those kind of results, but. When you go to the textbook, you can see that actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, textbook, and then I scroll down. Keep scroll down. Yeah, cause the chapter three is a very, very long chapter. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah uh, scroll down, yeah. When you scroll down a little bit, yeah. And then uh, by using the for loop as a line, and then you can get the, this kind of a line, line by line. Cause uh, uh, first we actually uh, importing the text file object as an object F. And then we can actually by using the that line function, this function, we can keep importing the line by line. And yeah, then uh, yeah. those line actually store as a zero indexing, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. That's yeah. the reason why this one is the, this one is actually assigned zero, one, this is the two, three, et cetera. So it's sort of- uh... By using the, by using the for loop. So, so what does this one actually does is uh, this one actually importing the file by the line, text mm -hmm. file by the line, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, so, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. And then also make, also whenever you open the file, when you're mm -hmm. done with the dev file, you have to make sure you have to, you have to using the F close function so, like to close the file yeah close the file mm. 
by typing that one, you actually uh, avoiding the sum of the error when you try to open the multiple file. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because yeah. uh, in this in this section actually basically show you about the basically how you can how we can importing for example like a text file by the line. Okay. Yeah, which 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 could be very useful yeah. depending on the type of yeah. Data and also are... yeah, yeah, and also there is also a function called the uh, f f one read, and then you can click the maybe zero. That means you can get the first line of the that text file. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those kind of things. So yeah, I think that this is it. But the thing is uh, whenever we try to do the data analysis, actually we 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 definitely using the pandas as a as a as a one big package for the for the managing and manipulating the data frame. So yeah. this one is a just kind of a very basic function about the importing the file. So it is not commonly used when we try to do the data analysis. Whenever we have a table or whenever we have a data frame or whenever we have an access spreadsheet or a CSV file, we always yeah, yeah. looking, we always try to looking at the those table or those data set by using the pandas package. But in this case, this one actually authors just kind of show us about the, how we can basically importing the file. Yeah, if you want to do it manually without uh, following yeah. the pandas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. just kind of a very basic kind of a, uh, introduction about the importing the file, especially for the text file by mm -hmm. reading the line by line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let me type the end. Mm. Um.